Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I did sort of say yesterday that during my Fight of the Night um, review, I almost said interview there, during my Fight of the Night review that I was going to try and get something done today, and this is that something done that I'm getting done today. Done, 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 done. So, um, yeah, I've got about five albums to go through for this one. I don't really have a lot else to say, really, until the intro of the video at least, so let's get through them. To clarify, these are the albums I listened to, not this past Friday, but the Friday before that, and we will begin with a Glow, I hope I'm saying that right, it's spelled G-H-L-O-W, with their album Slash and Burn. I believe it's a debut, um, Glow are a Swedish electropunk duo, um, and if you know anything about Sweden and the Scandinavia regions, you know that their metal is usually pretty fucking great. Um, they do some pretty good punk, and this is pretty good punk, I have to admit. I'm giving it a B. It's got some really strong moments to it. Um, you know, the guys certainly know what they're doing, because I, I believe it's two males. Uh, and they have a lot of fun with it, you know? It's got really good instrumentation. It does repeat a bit at some points, and it can feel a bit too short, but it's got really good production, and I do like how they mix up the punk rock energy with the electronic elements, and it's a really good mix, and it's also produced really well. I have to give them the credit for that. Like, they do know what they're doing. Then again, Sweden... And usually areas around that region have really good production value from their music. It doesn't really matter what they do. They just, like, sound really clean. And this album is a good example of that. So if you have a vague passing interest in Swedish duo electropunk, or just electropunk in general, um, maybe give this one a spin. It's up to you. Now we go from electropunk to punk that's not really electro at all. Uh, Incisions with their album Bliss. This is Incisions' second offering after a self-titled debut. And um, the band hail not from Sweden, but from Manchester, England. And I had to double check that because I thought they were American, but it turns out that was intentional because they have like this American sensibility to punk, but they drag it through like the ground of English punk. And it's a really great mix. Um, and this album is really good too. I'm giving it an A minus. I really enjoy this one. I am docking points because it is really short. Like it's only. It's, it's, I want to say it's 20, 25 minutes long. Hang on, I will edit it in. I will edit it in the actual time here. That's how long it is. That being said, I would absolutely recommend this album. It's just a really good punk album. It's got everything you would love from punk. You know, disenfranchisement, hatred against politicians, as is the standard with punk, you know. Um, and a good look at how, like, the last year was. I know that's, like, a theme we've been bringing up a lot in these episodes, but yeah, 2020 can go fuck itself, so... We're gonna move on now. And next up, we have another debut. Um, these are a band also from the UK, from Blackpool, not Manchester. And I think, of all the bands that I'm gonna be covering for this video, this might be the one people are expecting me to talk about most. Um, Octopus Montage with their debut album, How to Live and How to Lose. Um, so I've heard, like, some passing things from them, I've heard a couple of songs up until this album came out, and I do really like their vibe, and I really like this album too, I'm giving it also an A-, uh, really enjoyable mixture of pop punk and metalcore, I feel like if A Day to Remember gave a shit on their last album, this is what it would sound like. Uh, I am, I am ducking points, again, not because the album's short, it's actually got a really good structure for the most part, and I like how they stick to the heavier side of it, but... The last song is, it's really, it's got a really dumb name, it's only 27 seconds long, and it feels like one of those needlessly tacked on punk things, like, why would, why is that a closing track, it doesn't, like, okay, I have to give credit to the lyrics and the performances, because it was all done very tongue in cheek, and it did make me smile, but, why does the last track need to exist? I mean, you could have gotten rid of it, and the track before that would have served as a perfectly fine closer, but, you know, that's just me, however... Yeah, they've got a lot going for them, and this is a really, really good start to them in terms of, like, full-length albums, so hopefully they can just build off of this and make something even better. Um, I don't really, I can't really think of many areas to improve in, but if they can find them, then I'd love to see what they do for next time, so really excited about this, honestly. Next up is Plague Wilder with their new album, Covenant Death. Now, Plague Wilder hail from Ohio in the United States, and, um... Sort of a black, sludgy, uh, doomy vibe to their overall sound. Um, with a bit of a sort of post hardcore mix, but unlike um, The Drowned God, who actually did that style really well, this, not so much. I wasn't really feeling this one. I'm going to give it a C, and I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, of the doubt because I've listened to a lot of really good black metal this year in particular, 
And I feel like this one just missed the mark in some areas. Um, I couldn't really find a lot about the lyrics. I just felt like the structuring was a wee bit of a mess. Um, it does repeat a lot. But there's good stuff to it. The band try. They've got really good um, guitar work. So, yeah, they just need to find a way to link all the good stuff they have together in a better way. And they definitely need a better producer, I'll tell you that much. There was... God, it, it was really rough around the edges, this one. And not in that way that makes it sound, like, really organic, but more like in the, um... It just feels incomplete way. You know, I... And there's no real excuse for this, because... Uh, it's their first full album in three years. They did release a couple of singles and an EP before this. But I think, um, the last EP... Yeah, it came out, like, two years ago. So... That's even less of an excuse. Um, but yeah, there's good bones, but they're very, very flimsy. So be cautious around this one if you've got a passing interest in the genre. However, I do have faith in, Pl in Plague Wielder because for one thing, they sound like a badass boss monster from a Lost Ark Souls game. And for another thing, they've got a really good style going for them. They just need to really tighten up for the next time. And I hope that... In 2024, considering their albums have been released once every three years, that they're able to do that. So, we'll see. And finally for this episode, we have word with their third album, Burning Many Mirrors. Now, these are also a band from Manchester, like Incisions. They play black metal, like Plague Wilder. And they're really, really good, like Octopus Montage and Incisions. Um, yeah, this is a really solid black metal album. Definitely the sort of palate cleanser I needed after Plague Wilder's one left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm giving this a B+. Um, once again, I'm sort of taking away a couple of points because it's not really a well-known album and I couldn't really find a lot on the, uh, on the old lyrics, but the general themes seem to be, as I'm reading from the Metallum page, um, the cosmos, the apocalypse, death, and occultism. Um, I have one kind of tism, but it's not occultism. Hey! Pun. <laughs> anyway, um... I really did enjoy this one, though. This band have a really good, like, grouping of what they want to do. They've got a really sort of sonically dissonant sound. Like, it's full-on black metal as well. It doesn't really need to switch up the pacing. Really complex guitar work. Just a lot of it just really worked for me, you know? Um, it is one of those cases where I feel like it only minorly misses the mark in a couple of areas. Once again, if I had more to talk about, um, I would. But I think a B-plus is a solid grade anyway, because it is... A solid album and as you know I do like it when bands from my uh, country do really good shit and this album is really good shit and that will about do it for this episode I have no video plans right now possibly uh, well the next thing you'll see me for will be tomorrow night I will be streaming PBW versus AVW uh, the go home show for locked and loaded on Friday it's gonna be fucking great um, it's also let's see there might be another episode of Music of the Week this week. I don't really know. Uh, I will make a massive attempt to get the Just Cause 4 game review done uh, at some point as well. I have no goddamn idea when I'm going to be able to get that done. But I'll try. So, yeah, that's really all I have planned right now. Oh, and I'm going to start working on the backtracking Motionless and White episode today as well. So I've got to get to work on that as soon as this is up on YouTube. And yeah, um, I'll see you all tomorrow for a stream if you're gonna watch it, and I hope you do because it, it's 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 not to brag, but but it's good. It's really good. So yeah, um, see you all for that. And as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye bye.